Welcome back to Forensic Bites. Today we're going to be talking about cocaine. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Did you hear about the batch of cocaine that was cut with drain cleaner or rat poison or ground up glass? Sensationalist headlines like these ones are designed to grab your attention, hence why many media reports and newspapers will report in this way. In reality, it's actually very uncommon for overtly dangerous materials to be used as cutting agents for illicit drugs like cocaine and heroin. However, the practice is widely believed to be true amongst users, dealers, the general public, and even among forensically trained people like myself. So is the media lying? Well, it's not really quite that simple. It's more like creative interpretation of what the scientific findings are. So the UK newspaper The Observer ran a story on the quality of purchased heroin from around Great Britain. In that story, they collected several samples, which I then sent away for forensic testing. That forensic analysis found quartz present in those samples. Later, when the story was being written, that report of quartz was changed to glass when it featured in the article. And this came up with a headline of sweetener, stone, and even ground glass was being found in drugs bought around Great Britain. It's worth noting that if you do analyse glass, you will find a whole lot of silica, and silica is present in quartz. However, it's not the only place that you would find silica. So quartz is present in soil, especially in sand. So more likely dirt or sand was added to the heroin samples and not ground up glass. So why didn't forensically minded people question this finding? Well, there's actually a misconceived logic behind why you would add ground up glass to cocaine and other illicit drug samples. It relates especially to cocaine in that it's intended to be snorted. For the cocaine to get to the brain where it's going to have its effect, it needs to cross a membrane, primarily located here in the nasal cavity. So what needs to happen is the cocaine needs to cross over into the blood vessels. Once it's in the blood, it can travel around the circulatory system and reach the brain and have its intended effect. Now, the logic behind adding ground up glass to a cocaine sample is that the glass being sharp will break open the blood capillaries in the nasal cavity, and that will allow the cocaine to more quickly enter into the blood supply and deliver a stronger effect. But in reality, cocaine doesn't require ground up glass to quickly enter the circulatory system. So while there was kind of a convoluted logic to it, it isn't needed to do what it is intended to do. So if illicit drug samples are not cut with ground up glass, then what are they typically cut with? And if you think about drug dealing more as a business, what you want is your customers to come back to you. You don't want them getting poisoned and you don't want them having bad experiences if they buy from you because they're just going to go somewhere else. So what this means is that drugs are typically cut with cheap but relatively safe cutting agents. And the most common cutting agents are simple sugar, paracetamol, caffeine, or the relatively common benzocaine, which is a painkiller. The biggest factor behind selecting the type of cutting agent is you need the cutting agent to very closely resemble the drug that you are adding it to, so that you can't visually see that a cutting agent has been added. So just to finish, what about cannabis? In 2007, glass beads were discovered in a batch of cannabis in the United Kingdom, and this was dubbed grit weed. Some investigation found that the weed originated from the Netherlands, and it was thought that the addition of these glass beads was to increase the weight of the product while still giving the appearance of a high quality material. And this was being done on industrial scale, so these samples were being found from all around the country. While this sounds scary, given that cannabis is intended to be smoked, a spokesperson from the British Thoracic Society said that it was actually unlikely to be dangerous given that the particle size of the glass beads was too big to be efficiently inhaled into the lungs of the users. Now, I don't want to say that all cutting agents are safe. There's been a recent trend of cutting illicit drugs with fentanyl to improve the perceived effect of the drug, and I'm going to go into that in another video. There's also been examples of drugs cut with dangerous materials like poisons, but typically there's been an ulterior motive behind that. So maybe someone owes someone money, and that person was given drugs that were laced with a dangerous material as payback. But this is rare. 
That's all I really have for you today on Cutting Agents. Thanks for listening.